Good evening. It is 7 p.m. Wednesday, September 5th, 2018. This is a public hearing of the Town of Speedway Board of Zoning Appeals. I am Mike Simonson, Chairman of the Board. Board members in attendance tonight are Mike Allen, our Vice Chairman, Tyler Carmichael, our Secretary, Janet Fullen, and Steve Jones, additional members of the Board. Representing the Indianapolis Department of Metropolitan Development Planning Division is Ms. Kathleen Blackham. <clears throat> have all who wish to speak been sworn in? They have. Thank you. Would all please mute or turn off any cell phones at this time? And please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Rules for those who wish to speak at this evening's hearing. The petitioner, remonstrator, or any proponents will each have 15 minutes to present their evidence. We will then hear from Ms. Kathleen Blackham from DMD. After her presentation, there will be a five-minute rebuttal period. Tonight's petition is 2018 DBS 00. 3, 1842 Fisher Avenue, Anna Wagner Garage Remodel. Would the petitioner or their representative please step to the podium and state your name and address for the record? Amanda Foe Smith, uh, 1070, excuse me, 1073 Oliver Avenue, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46221. Um, we are seeking approval to have a second dwelling uh, on uh, one plat. Anything you want to tell us about it? Explain it to us. Um, well, it's to um, it's for uh, Kathleen or sorry, Kathy um, to live in. Um, they are really. If you want to come up and sure. do your part. Okay. Hi. Can you, can you state um, okay. your name and address for the record as well, please? My name is Anna Wagoner, okay. um, and, and I own the property w that we are applying for. So I have something here. Um, I'm requesting the approval for a variance on my property located at 1842 Fisher here in Speedway. I grew up here and decided to purchase property in Speedway. Not only because we're close to downtown, we have quick and easy access to necessary amenities, but also because of the sense of community. This variance is required by the town of Speedway due to the current regulations, which do not allow multiple residences on a single property. Um, a variance is no longer required by the city of Indianapolis for this situation. Many garage conversions have occurred resulting in an increased property values in Indianapolis. Um, the living space of the garage conversion I'm requesting will be a fewer square feet than the house. So apparently the carport has been considered part of the living space, which I don't think it is, but that's just my opinion. So I'm just throwing that out there. Okay. Um, so, because that's, that space is not heated or air conditioned, so it will only be used, you know, during the right kind of weather. Inclement weather, you won't be able to use it, so it's not really a living space. Um, so are you talking about the, the sun porch versus the carport? Well, it's, it, it, it's a carport that's been converted into, it has screen around it now, so I guess if you want to call it a, a sunroom, you can, even though it's... The print Just, indicates it as a sunroom, that's why I asked. Sure. Are there photos available? Um, not we of the photos. garage area, just of the house. Oh, we had have, we have some. There were some. That's the garage. The only pictures of the garage we have are the backside because the structure is fenced in and is not visible from either the street or the alley. Mm -hmm. And those pictures were provided by, or who took those pictures? And, they are provided in our report from DMD. Oh, okay. 
My specific garage conversion will be used specifically to house my mother and will not be leased to a tenant. Multi-general housing is a huge trend that supports family values and improves quality of life for family members. Having her close will ensure her safety and independence, something we all aspire to retain as we age. Since purchasing this property, I've made many improvements, including interior functionality and aesthetic, as well as a complete landscaping overhaul in the backyard. I intend for the conversion and its landscaping to be consistent with the appearance of the surrounding structures and landscaping. In the filing, I'm not seeing any additional pictures showing the existing garage or, or what that appearance is. Um, no. We have a Google. All we have is a Google yeah. or the front of the house. So, now, in the original filing for the variance, the findings of fact indicated that the the purpose for the remodel was for an income property and to help with the future sale of the property. No, that is incorrect. And then why was that submitted as? I'm not sure. I don't, That's what I'm not I was aware of told. that. That's what I was told as far as because increasing the value of the property. Someone else who has a. But it, it also stated income property, which to me means a rental property. Then that I that's not what I was meaning. I don't think I that that's that was, what I put, but yeah. that's not what I intended. Where was where where was that? That was in the Facts. findings of fact that were originally submitted with the mm -hmm. the variance request. Now, in a uh, additional filing, there was a a change in that to indicate that it was for a family member. Okay. But. So the, I guess the original some, findings of facts were for the use, not the development standard, or do I have that flip-flopped? Um, the original findings of fact were for use, correct. Okay. So then when I corrected, that's when I made the correction on all of the finding of facts? Okay. But there's still there's that that question in the air that it, it was stated at one point. Well, I, I believe that's that what we're using right now. It was potential income property and, and increased for future sale. Okay. That so makes we have sense. to... For future sale, that would mean that uh, one of the upsides to allowing it would be an increase in property value. Yeah. Do you want to peek at Not necessarily time? right now or trying to, to rent it out. Right. Okay. But what you're stating is you have no intention of using that as a rental property on the back of your existing exactly. property. And that you're willing to put that on the record? Absolutely. Sure. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Sure. How Sorry long have confusion. you been the owner? I've, I've, I bought the house in 2015, so exactly three years. And uh, you reside month. in the main house? Yes. Okay. And so this carport is now screened in? It is. Yes. So it is more like a summer room than, or a three season room, I guess, mm. what it would be considered maybe? It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't have any glass windows at all. Right. I mean, That's why I mean three season, maybe mid fall or something, you know, sure. nothing crazy. Okay. The landscape plan that was submitted with the the filing was difficult at best to understand mm -hmm. what the intentions were, what was being planted where. Um, can you elaborate more on what the the goal is with the landscaping and it's it's minimal for one thing I don't want to do anything too extremely uh, detailed um, I'm just looking to I'm, no trees nothing big okay um, if the largest plants would probably be a rose of Sharon which is a small I mean it's a it's a probably what six foot tall at, at the Maturity. A list of Japanese maple. That'd be a, boxwoods. Yeah, small. That's a smaller tree. Yeah. The maple, obviously, and then the boxwood would just be for a smaller decorative shrub. And there's a proposal for a, an additional carport on the back of the. Right. Garage. 
gravel driveway mm -hmm. to the alley. So, are you aware of the issue the fence across the driveway creates? No. It, the fence across the drive blocks the view of the, the garage from the street. And it's required that for second residence, the primary entrance must be visible from the right of way for first responders and other emergency personnel. Okay. And that fence creates a blockage. Okay, of that question. View. Because I have a dog, is that something that has to be uh, available for view at all times or? Yes. Okay. It's for emergency response purposes and visibility for right. for those showing up so they know where the entry point is for a structure. Okay. Um, would it be an option to make the available entry point for emergency means through the alley? I'm not sure if the alley is considered a right of way as, as much as the street for the fire trucks, ambulance, police cars responding are typically going to pull up out front of an address, not to the rear of a structure because okay. they don't know where the that structure is on the grid if the garage were on fire they would pull into the alley anyway right they, now well if they had access they would not they would pull up on the street where the fire hydrant is it's true is that fence a gate or is that a permanent fixture is that access it's a gate so you can't yes okay. it is it, it does open okay Do you, how tall is your existing house? Do you know? Um, how tall? I guess the question is, is, is the proposed one... modification to the garage going to exceed the height oh, of the house? No. no. That was one of the main objectives. Is your house, your residence, is that a two-story residence? No, it's a one-story. It has an attic, but it's not used. Right. Um, because it's showing on your drawings that uh, the addition or um, on the garage would be 23 feet tall, which indicates, you know, obviously two stories with a roof line. Um, Okay, the house is 25. It, the, it's uh, it's on a cinder block, mm -hmm. so it's three, you know, three right. feet, and then the, then this is the floor, right, and then the attic. So um, she's looking for the detailed information. Right. Thank you. Um, this is the ILP from the permit office. Um, and it states that the primary, which is her home, is 24 feet, um, and the proposed addition to the garage will not max 23. Okay. Thank you. Is there any other questions for the petitioner? No. <clears throat> nope. Not currently. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak for or against the proposed petition? I do have a letter. Uh, we sent out a few um, letters to surrounding neighbors to see how they felt, um, if they would be in support. Um, we did receive uh, one letter uh, in support. <laughs> okay. My name is Kathleen Thompson. I'm, I'm Anna's mother. 
I've lived in Speedway since my family moved here when I was 15 years old. I raised my family here. My late husband grew up here. I became a widow 10 months ago. Because of the manner in which his estate was set up, I could not afford to buy a home in Speedway. I need to live near my daughter for both financial and possible future health issues. My daughter needs me near her so that she will be, still be able to help me with the above issues and make a living for herself. She's the only family that I can depend on. I have one other daughter who lives out of state. Okay. That's all I have to say. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else who wishes to speak for or against the petition? Seeing none, we'll hear from Ms. Blackham from DMD. Thank you, Chairperson Simonson, members of the board. Kathleen Blackham with the City of Indianapolis, 200 East Washington Street, room 1842. <clears throat> the staff is recommending denial of this request, but before I get into the details of that, I'd like to clarify something that was previously stated that the zoning ordinance applies both to the city and the town of Speedway the same there are not two different ordinances that we're dealing with and under the most recent uh, update of the ordinance of 2016 it permits a second dwelling on top of or in conjunction with a detached building, which means that detached building in this case could still be used as a garage and then the living space would be above that. However, there are some requirements related to that. First of all, it cannot exceed 720 square feet. The uh, entrance has to be visible from the street and uh, Chairperson Simonson uh, uh, spoke to that and the owner has to live in either the primary residence or the accessory residence. In this case, the garage is no longer being used as a garage, so what they're doing is converting the garage into a second dwelling, and that then creates the situation where you've got two dwelling units on one lot, which is not a permitted use. So they're asking for those two dwelling units, and those are not permitted. And again, the ordinance applies to both the town of Speedway and the city of Indianapolis. Staff, again, believes that this is not appropriate. What this does is add a second dwelling. It increases the density. It would increase the density to approximately 13.3 units per acre, which is much more than what exists there. Staff is also concerned about the fact that it's going to open the door for more residents there and more secondary two residents on this neighborhood that is clearly characterized by one single family dwelling on a lot. Again, this is going to be increasing the density of this neighborhood and staff does not believe that is appropriate. There is a note in the staff report about the well field, although all those uses are permitted in the well field. And if there are some is issues related to the flood, or the, the, the um, excuse me, not the well field, but the floodplain fringe, that whole area uh, is within that flood, uh, floodway fringe, which I'm sure you're aware of. And they would, at the time of permitting, they would pick that up. But staff just wanted to make uh, that statement about the fact that it is within a floodplain. Uh, the, uh, the other thing staff would like to note is the site plan that shows the landscaping. The carport that they show is really not drawn to scale because if you look at that, the carport would actually take up most of that rear yard. Because they show this, uh, the carport is just a little square connected to the corner of the garage and it is it would, in order to be, to scale and match the rest of it, it would be covering a lot of, uh, a majority of that backyard. 
And again, staff is recommending denial of this and would we'll be glad to answer any questions that you might have. So what, what you described in the beginning was more of a carriage house type yes. of scenario where yes. the, the garage is still a, a functional aspect of the detached structure. Yes, it, it's part of an accessory structure. Now, if they were to add on to the house versus trying to convert the garage into a, a living space, there would not be any issue of uh, lot coverage or too much structure for the size of, of lot that would there. if they added to the the uh, the primary building the dwelling it would still that open space component would still be would st would still need to be figured but there's presumably there's a reasonable amount of space on the the mm -hmm. lot to put an addition on versus yes. trying to make a second dwelling structure right and it would need to meet the setbacks for the d5 but yes, it could be added. There could <coughs> be an addition on there. Yes. Do you have a rough idea about how big that they could add on? How many square feet? Well, I, I, I don't off oh, the top of my head. Okay. Uh, just that, you know, if they wanted to add 900 square feet onto that house, it, it would be probably uh, an appropriate size. But I, I, don't, I don't know what they have in mind. But. Right. But if they decided to keep the garage and just build a second story, that would be more appropriate, correct? That would be, it would be, except for the fact that they're, uh, it, they're talking about 960 square feet and the, a right. carriage house is only permitted 720. Well, yeah. I mean, if they just built a second story on top of the garage, it would obviously lessen that to the footprint right. of the garage. Yeah. Yes. The building height of the existing structure, to what point of the structure is that measured? I don't know where that is measured. I would assume it's at the peak. So the the peak would be the... From what they indicated, it was what, the, 20... The, the chimney. 24. It, it appears that the chimney might be added into that building height. Okay. Which will add... Probably, what, three... Another couple feet to the two to three feet to the yes. measure but the chimney doesn't it's the roof line it's, it's roof. basically the, it's roof, the roof, line. roof line okay yeah <clears throat> any other questions for no <clears throat> no not currently I have none. well actually one more question uh -huh. do you know when we're talking about the fence on the driveway uh, uh, the r entrance of the residence would have to be seen from the right of way. Yes. The alleyway would not constitute a right of way. Are it we... would, yes. It could? Yes. But the entrance, as you see it, is not from the alley. The, the entrance, right. as they're proposing it, is facing Fishers Avenue. Mm -hmm. So if they were to make the main entrance on the back side of the garage, yeah, they would the still alley. be visible from a right of way, yeah. Okay. So they would basically have to change your footprint or the entrance to the residence. Right. Okay. But then that would be, you know, you would be, there would be also a carport because they're proposing a carport too. So that's, that would have to be, right. they'd have to re be re redesigning. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm hmm Any other questions? Um, if they were to change the fence on the drive to a chain link for its see-through, would that satisfy the visibility it would. component of uh -huh. the right-of-way? Yes. Okay. I'm trying to think of something that would still keep a dog corralled, potentially, uh -huh. unless a six-foot fence is necessary because of its ability to leap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I have no more questions. I have none. Okay.
Thank you, Kathleen. <coughs> Is there any rebuttal from the petitioner to answer any questions or concerns that were um, just brought up? I guess more along the line of if they were to kind of go back to the drawing board, um, it doesn't sound like two primaries are a go, obviously, the carriage house. Um, would a variance be needed if they were to change from the front driveway to a back driveway? Is that something that would be require some sort of development standard or you say change from front driveway well, you to were back saying because of the gate um for the entrance as far uh, as but that are you just proposing to keep the garage a garage that is well yes and yes and build it as a carriage house the, you right. understand the situation we need to so figure basically out how to keep get the garage home. right yeah Keep the garage home because you're proposing a second story anyway with stairs. Right. So keeping the garage, making it a Building carriage the house. Building 720 above it. And then changing the entrance to the alleyway as opposed to. Is that to, what you want? Is that yeah? I just want. I didn't know if there would right. be a variance needed for that sort of thing. If we're here now. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Until we know exactly what you're proposing, it's hard to to say. Okay. What, and you know, if we're, you know, keep in mind the 720 square foot right. maximum livable space. Okay. And we'll go to the drawing board. The structure. So, um, is this something that we want to continue? No. Continue? <laughs> <laughs> No. Well, I mean, what they're no. if they're going to change their overall plan, then we they either need to withdraw, withdraw request you know withdraw your petition, or have us vote on what you've yeah. you've presented, and we'll we'll move forward from there. Yeah, I think we would uh, withdraw the petition, withdraw and the petition. Mm -hmm, and I think we'll go back to the drawing board and do a carriage, a detached garage with carriage house. Okay. So at this time, you're you're requesting to withdraw your petition. Um, need to have a vote on that just to confirm it. So at this time, the petitioner for 2018 UVS 007 has requested to withdraw their petition. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries 5-0. The petition has been withdrawn. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Is there any other business to come before our board this evening? Why don't you keep these for now? Seeing none, our next scheduled meeting will be on October 3rd, 2018, at 7 p.m. here at Town Hall, and our meeting is adjourned at 727.